Welcome to Sculpture Studios. In this video we're creating giant heart heads for a university concept. The client sent us these initial images, and once we let them know this is something we can make for them, they sent us revised images with updated designs. This first one's called Sweethearts, originally with a candy dispenser in her head, and now the new design shows where the candy's in her body. Next is Heartburn, shown with a smoke machine inside his mouth, made semi-translucent so that a glowing red light can be seen when the button's pressed. Heartbeat with big retro headphones, and in the new design, his eyes are going to be replaced with actual working plug-in speakers. Mihati, a pirate captain, complete with hat, gold tooth and an eye patch. Heartthrob going for a Danny Zuko meets Elvis meets Fonzie kind of character. And the last one is Heartless, sinister and gothic looking, made hollow with a Grim Reaper like hood. These six designs make up the Heartbots as the client called them, and they're designed to represent different choices between universities, based upon likeability and not just purely academics. So, to work. We begin by blowing the image up to scale, and drawing half of a heart on tissue paper. When we cut this out and flip it over to complete the other side, it ensures we've sketched out a heart that's perfectly symmetrical on either side. Not only is this a good method for aesthetics, but it enables us to carve half of a heart and create a mould, knowing that two identical casts can be made, and they'll match up when they're put back to back. The heart's being carved from polystyrene, as it's quick and easy to create a form from this material. We use a table hot wire, nail brushes and sandpapers to create a rough shape. The client's left it up to Aiden to judge the actual volume of the hearts, and make sure the roundness is correct, so that the two casts match up correctly. Once the heart is all sanded down and relatively smooth, Aiden covers it in sticky foil, and is now creating a waste mould. This means that only one cast can be taken from it, as he only needs one, and the mould's made from plaster Paris. He uses a scrim material within the plaster to give it more strength. This is but the first of many stages in the mould making process, as Aiden wants to ensure he gets a beautiful finish when the casts come out. Seeing as there's going to be a total of 9 halves created, it's best to get the mould perfect at this stage, so that there's less unnecessary work later on. He then lays into the plaster mould with fibreglass, and by cleaning this cast up, he's creating an even smoother master pattern. He takes a mould from this, that's strong enough for multiple casting, and uses finer and finer grades of sandpaper to rub it down. Each cleaning up stage throughout this process ensures the final outcome is getting better and better. Aiden's using a red gel coat here for the casts, so that if the hearts are ever scratched through their red paint, they'll still have a red base layer underneath. He lays up the cast with a couple of ounces of glass fibre, making sure to double up on all the edges where the hearts are going to be joined together and handled from. We trim off the edges, removing any flash material, and we're using our gel line as a guide to trim down to. When the second half is cast and trimmed, we use a PU expanding foam to create a sort of shelf on the interior of each edge. We then put chopped strand and resin on these ledges, so that we can squidge the two halves together and let them set. We then clean off any excess resin, and go over these joins with car body filler. We sand it down, reapply it, until we've got a perfectly seamless join. Cleaning up and sanding down always takes a long time, but in order to get a lovely spray paint finish at the end, this needs to be as smooth as possible. Here you can see Aiden popping one of the two casts out of the mould that will make up Heartburn. For this he's using clear resin and Tentex glass to create a semi-translucent look that will let the light through once it's lit from the inside. We've created other sculptures using this material before, such as our fiberglass string lanterns, where we have a video online showing a little more depth in this process. It can be tricky to get right, but it's very effective when it's executed well, with no what we call hot spots, and when the material's nice and even. This isn't so much of an issue for heartburn, however, as it's designed to look burnt in places. We've impregnated string with black resin for colour and strength, and we're wrapping it round in a random fashion, and holding it together with hot glue. We were conscious of making these sculptures as light as possible, so for Heartthrob's hair, we used the PU foam we used earlier, and we built it up in layers to get a good volume of lightweight material. We also experimented with different sizes of sunglasses, and thought that in order to make them cool and not comical, a more modest, smaller set of sunglasses suited them better than ridiculously oversized. To get the right curve, we sculpt it on in clay, and then make a waste plaster mould. As we had a deadline to meet and we needed to get all six finished, we worked on them simultaneously, and this video, though it appears mixed up by flicking between them, it shows the whole process in its chronological order. We drew the faces onto the hearts as they stood at this stage, to send them to the client so they could have a look. We let them evaluate the hearts at this moment, so that they could make any decisions and alterations, as from here on in there's no turning back especially when we're cutting straight into the fiberglass and fixing accessories on, so we needed to make sure we got it right. Here's Heartthrob's hair, getting cleaned up in its full volume, and we're proceeding to laying up the plaster mould of the sunglasses with a couple of ounces of glass fibre. With the mould taken straight from the heart cast itself, it should fit perfectly, and then we just make up the seam line around the edge. 
This all needs to be cleaned up once it's gone off and set, as well as the plaster join line between his hair and his face. After making this prototype of Heartbeat's headphones, we decided to use polystyrene and foam as lightweight alternatives instead of glass fibre. Here we're offering them up to work out where they're going to be positioned, and testing how the speaker eyes will fit. We'll save fixing these in until later, as the hearts have yet to be sprayed, and we want to keep all the components nice and clean. Starting on Heartless now, she, well I'm assuming it's a she, is made up of just one heart cast, left hollow. She's then dressed with a hooded cloak, and we tack it in position with a glue gun, and this temporarily holds it before we go over the whole thing with black resin. This application gives the fabric a hard shell-like quality, a slight shimmer as it catches the light, and generally bonds the whole piece together. We need to make sure we position the material correctly while the resin's going off, as it wants to make the material heavy and droop. We go over it a few times to make sure it's nice and strong. With Heartburn, we're adding glass fragments and crystal pieces to give it that sharp and jagged look. We add black and red artwork to make it look uncomfortable and sore, and all this is sealed with transparent glue and resin to make sure it's safe to touch but still has texture. Black emulsion paints used on Heartthrob's hair, as it's going straight onto regular household plaster, and everything else is given a general paint and a dressing, so that when we invite the clients down, it gives them a taste of how everything's going to look. Discussions were had about the positioning of the heads on the bases, which they already have made, and any issues in regards to tilting or something not fitting correctly. To avoid any complications, they had some discs laser cut that we could attach straight onto our heads so that we knew they would fit easily onto the body sections. We simply trimmed our bases to the same size, taped up the holes so they stayed clean and clear, and joined the discs to the fiberglass with strong hold bonding paste. We clamped it all together and left it overnight to set. When the clamps were removed, we drilled through the existing holes in the disc, straight through the fiberglass, so that when the clients receive the hearts, they can put a bolt through the whole thing to attach it to the base. With the headphones being made in pieces, we've sealed it all together with a 261 PVA glue and attached it to the head. With all the components now in place, it was time for the red spray coat. Aiden sprayed these with the 2K gloss paint, and the colour came out lovely and rich. Here we have Mihati, and now that the paint's dry, we're adding a leather strap and an eye patch for realistic texture, rather than just simply painting one on. We're adding a black gloss paint for Heartthrob's glasses, to make them stand out and look like plastic, and now I'm installing Heartbeat's eyes. I'm using a little mirror inside his mouth to fill in behind the speakers and fix them in securely. Painting the headphones, making sure everything's covered and there's a nice crisp join line, and that the spray from the Redis art worked out. Originally we were given a sort of chicken wire material that was to be covered with a black fabric for Heartbeat's mouth, but we experimented with an aluminium mesh and the client agreed that it looked much brighter and a lot more retro. We fixed this in and began mapping out the eyes and mouths on those that needed it. We used an overhead projector to scale the concept features onto the hearts and used a fine line calligraphy brush to make the paintwork as neat as possible. We did a bit of playing around, trying out different styles, sizes and positioning to give the features the right feel for each character. Ayy. It's nice taking on projects like this, as we've always prided ourselves on being able to accomplish more than just what meets the eye. Everything from concept and design work, to the actual labour and construction of the pieces, as well as the artwork and finishing. It's also nice working with clients that have a good working knowledge of the process, the limitations, and the possibilities of what can and can't be done. For Sid and Rebecca, they understood that things needed to move quickly, and so they trusted Sculpture Studios to make the right decisions and get it done on schedule. With their cooperation and strict time frame, we were happy to work overnight and over the weekends to get this finished to the best standard for them. We'd like to thank Rebecca and Sid for coming to Sculpture Studios and entrusting us with their project. We hope everything went well for them, now that they're all dressed up and finished, out in the public. Please feel free to leave any comments below, as they're always appreciated, and hit the subscribe button for our latest videos. You can like Sculpture Studios on Facebook, and for more of our work, visit sculpturestudios.co.uk. Thank you very much for watching. <laughs>